Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. Come on, let's get cooking. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers and the winning dish, judged by Gino, will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. Remember, this is your great-grandmother's recipes. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a delicious recipe from the Isle of Anglesey that's made with fresh eggs and holds great significance for one family. It always sort of brings us all together and it's, it's just something really comforting about it that I really, really love. A fabulous dish that's travelled over 4,000 miles to bring one cook's exotic African heritage to North Wales. The biggest memory I've got is the smell of the cooking, you know, and everyone sat around and my grandmother would show me how things went into the pan and I remember stirring it and the smell and it was just amazing. And a very old traditional recipe that makes use of Wales' national emblem, the humble leek. It was made first by my great-grandma, and she used to cook it for my great-grandpa, and then she passed it recipe down to my grandma, who passed it down to my mom, and then she passed it on to me. This is There's No Taste Like Home. I'm Gino De Campo, and today I'm in Port Marion in Wales. Welsh food developed to feed the hard-working men and women of this country, using only the finest of the ingredients available to them. Because of the rugged terrain around here, the only two vegetables that they were growing was leeks and cabbage. And good job that they liked them. Well, we have three traditional hearty dishes on today's menu and three home cooks desperate to show them off. So I brought them to this restaurant where in a matter of hours they will be serving them up for paying diners. But how will they cope when they're going to be faced with a professional kitchen full of critical customers? Will they be able to prove that there's no taste like home? Well, I'm going to go in there and find out. Chloe Valchak is making her great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs, served with a fresh green salad. Michelle Thomas is creating great-grandma Odette's Kenyan stew, served with mashed potato and kale. And Jen Todd is cooking up her great-nan Sarah's leek soup, served with Welsh rabbit stars. Girls, what do you think about the professional kitchen? Scary. Scary? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Whatever you do, look after each other, OK? Enjoy the day, smile. Okay. Remember, this is your family's recipe, so keep smiling. And let's get on, let's get on, let's get on. Come on, everybody in position, everybody in position. Let's find out how our first cook makes her dish at home. 25-year-old Chloe Valchak works as a manager at her mum's delicatessen and lives here in Beaumaris on Anglesey with partner Tony. Today, she's making her great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs. This layered leek, cheddar and mashed potato dish is popular throughout the whole of North Wales, but is particularly well known on the Isle of Anglesey because of the fantastic quality of the local eggs. This is how I make my great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs. I start by taking four eggs and placing them in boiling water. This dish means a lot because it's something that it's very traditional towards the family and it's something that I can always remember with the family. I've got a niece and nephew now and hopefully when they're old enough they'll be able to learn this dish as well. I'm going to take the eggs off and drain them. So I peeled my potatoes, I'm now going to chop them up into smaller pieces so that they boil a bit quicker. I'm going to um, peel my eggs so that they're ready for later on, and they're going to have nice yolks. I think the mixture of eggs and leeks works together really well, because you've got that mildness of the, the egg, but you've got that nice sort of chalky texture, and then you've got that nice sort of not overly strong onioniness from the leek, which I think balances out really well. Next, I'm finely chop 300 grams of leeks and sauté in a little butter, olive oil and seasoning until they're softened. It's kind of a bit of an honour for my great-grandmother to actually... It's going back to a restaurant that was near where she lived. It's actually a real honour for her, I think, more than anything. They feel nicely ready to me. I did have a traditional masher 
but um, this gives that lovely smooth potato. Definitely a lot easier than mashing. Next is the most complicated part of the dish, is cheese sauce. I should imagine that the cheese has changed because I can probably imagine that it was just a basic cheese that was used back then. But I tend to go for a nice mature cheddar because I like nice strong cheese sauce. For me it's important to use local products or as, as local as possible because I think it keeps that sort of dish being from Anglesey or as close to Anglesey as possible. So I'm going to put butter into my pan. Flour goes in. I'm just going to add a bit of milk at a time, stir it through so that I'm cooking the flour as well as heating the milk. Keep stirring and don't turn away from the sauce. I'm going to add the cheese. Now that the sauce is done, we're ready to start layering the dish and get it all in the oven. Oh, perfect. So I'm going to start with sort of half the amount of potato in the bottom of my dish. There we go. Cheese sauce leaks. There we go, all ready. So I'm going to bang it in the oven now for about 45 minutes on 180 degrees. I serve the dish with a simple rocket and tomato salad. That's Chloe's great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs, served with a fresh green salad, a dish with a fascinating Celtic heritage. Chloe, stop yep. for a second and tell me about your recipe. It's something my great-grandmother used to make, as far as I know it goes back that far. Um, it's called Anglesey eggs, uh, and it's something I've always enjoyed since I was little. <laughs> People have told me that my great-grandma was a very sort of hardy lady and that she was very sort of hands-on, she was always getting involved in things. Um, either she was in the vegetable patch in the garden or she was doing sewing or making something in the kitchen. She was always on the go because post-war she had um, what they used to call like open house. It was almost B&B but she had like paying guests. They would come and stay with her, they would come and eat with her but they were friends, relatives. She was always having people passing through the house. You know, that sort of constant work going on in and around places. A proper woman's woman. A proper woman's woman. Yeah. And then did he go anywhere else? Yeah, went on to my grandmother. She was a bit glam. She tends to not cook it sort of uh, as straightforward as my great grandmother. She used to. She was more of a, a packet cheese sauce person rather than making her own. Okay. Then it went on to my mum, who took the recipe back again um, and started making it to the purity. You yeah. know, not packets anymore. No, no yeah. packets, no packets, and teaching us how to how to make it how great grandma Jane used to. I can remember being about five or six when I first tried it. It was given to us as a, a cheese and potato pie. And I can remember finding this piece of egg in amongst this pie and going, uh, hang on a minute, I've been sort of told a bit of a porky pie too. Mum's trying to get us to eat eggs because we were horrendous for eating eggs when we were little. So that was her way around it. Mum always made sure, because there were three girls, that we knew exactly how to cook. The hub of the home was the kitchen and that we were always involved in what she was doing. We always had a spoon in things or hands in something. One thing I really do remember is getting the last couple of stirs in, then I get to lick the spoon then. <laughs> what would it mean to you to have this dish that has been in your family for, you know, 100 years, mm. over 100 years now, to all of a sudden be on a restaurant menu and everybody can enjoy it? Um, sense of pride, because it's my family. And it's one of those things that it's just, whenever I make it or I go around to mum and she makes it, it, it always sort of brings us all together. And it's, it's just something really comforting about it that I really, really love and just reminds me of home. Chloe starts her preparation by peeling the potatoes ready for her mash, while surrounded by dozens of Anglesey eggs. 
Cooking her dish in a professional kitchen is a serious challenge compared to home, so she's come mentally prepared. I'm just hoping everything goes to plan and that I don't burn anything and that uh, my cheese sauce doesn't end up really hard and I can't get it to work right. I've got my plan in my head of what I'm doing and as long as I keep step by step, I'll be okay. A wonderful home-cooked recipe that hopefully is going to wow my diners today. But don't go anywhere because I have two more to come. Coming up. Two more delicious recipes, a stew that hails all the way from North Africa, and a real celebration of Wales. Five stew, one soup, one egg. Yes, yes, chef. Plus an exceptionally busy service tests our cooks to the limit. Two soup. Yes, chef. One egg. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. One more stew. Probably hotter than the surface of the sun right at this moment in time. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home, where today I'm in Port Marion on the Welsh coast. I've taken three home cooks and plunged them into a professional kitchen. And I want to find out if they can handle the heat and prepare their dish for paying customers. We have already met our first cook, but now I'm hungry for another tasty dish. Michelle Thomas is a 31-year-old retail manager from Connors Quay, who also finds time to run her own cupcake business. She's married to husband Mark and has a 16-month-old daughter called Imogen. Today, she's cooking Machuzi Wa Kondu, which is Swahili for great-grandma Odette's Kenyan stew. It's served with irio, mashed potato, and sukumawiki, which is an accompaniment of kale. Michelle's first memory of the dish is when she was six years old in Kenya, and she would help her grandmother to cook it. The first thing I'm going to do to make my great-grandma Odette's Kenyan stew is to chop all my onions and dice them. When I make this dish, it just brings such fond memories um, of cooking with my grandmother, you know, the smell of it, childhood, the taste of it. It's just amazing. The reason why I really love to cook these meals is because I absolutely love Kenya and I love Kenyan dishes. I'm such a mixture of background, culture, origin, I'd probably describe myself as a stock cube <laughs> because I'm a bit of this and a bit of that. I like to do a lot of cooking. I think, you know, you can get so much more fulfillment and enjoyment of doing your own. What I'm gonna do now is add some tomatoes to the dish. The recipe's changed slightly over the years. In Nairobi, they used to cook with mutton and obviously I can't source mutton locally. Um, and we've got just, Welsh lamb is just fantastic and so tasty. I'm just about to put my tomato puree into my dish, um, followed by garlic and ginger. I'm going to put the diced lamb into the pan, ready to cook. I'm just about to uh, add the vegetable stock to the dish of stew now. Right, I'm gonna add some wine, some carrots to the stew now. The coriander's finely chopped. While this is simmering for about 40 minutes, I'm going to now get started on the irio. Having this recipe on um, the restaurant menu would do my family so proud. Not only my family back in Kenya, but also my family in Wales, because we're using a recipe that we had in Kenya from 1929. We've changed it slightly to our, the way we want to have it. Um, and we're using lots of Welsh ingredients and Welsh produce, so it's the fusion of the two, really, that I'm really proud of. What I'm going to do now is put some oil in a pan, ready for the potatoes, because we'll need that to fry our onions. Put some curry powder in. I've got 125 grams of corn, sweet corn, 125 grams of garden peas, and 125 uh, grams of kidney beans handful of spinach and it's all going to go into the pan together. Right, I'm just going to add now the fried onions with curry powder into the area. There you go. Mashed potatoes all done and the stew's all done. So it's just time to plate up. 
That's Michelle's recipe for Great Grandma Odette's Kenyan stew, served with mashed potato and kale. A dish which, despite its journey, hasn't changed in generations. Why is it so important to you, this recipe? It actually comes from my great grandmother, who um, was actually from the Seychelles, who okay. went over to Kenya as an au pair for a British family. It obviously filtered down to my grandmother, uh, Jane. She showed my mum, Yasmin. Obviously, I came along and I've kind of like inherited all the recipes and all the culture behind it. My grandmother, Jane, oh my God, she was just an amazing woman. She just embraced everything around it. She wanted people to be happy and the food equaled happiness. And that was the sort of the pillar of our family. She was amazing and she taught me everything I know. She's a fab woman. I left North Wales to go to Kenya when I was six years old. So obviously the transition of food was quite diverse, really. The biggest memory I've got, really, is the smell of the cooking when everyone sat around. We, they used to use things called jikos to cook, and they're like little coal burners, and they would cook on that, and we would sit all around that, and my grandmother would show me how things went into the pan, and I remember stirring it and the smell, and it was just amazing. And I miss Kenya, so being able to cook this food reminds me of the life that I did have. I mean, I was quite young when I was there and I was 17 when I left. Okay. It's a time of your life where you have really fond memories. So I wanted to make sure those memories stayed alive, really. My mum's still in Kenya. You know, she keeps on saying to me, you must remember Swahili, you must remember Creole, you know, you must remember where I come from. And I think I appreciate that more as I'm getting older. Michelle starts cooking her Kenyan stew by preparing a base of well-seasoned onions and garlic with tomatoes. What an amazing dish, and I absolutely love the story behind. Today's menu is really taking shape, but I have one more cook to meet, and I can't wait. 30-year-old Jen Todd is from Abergelly in North Wales, here with Mum Jean, who today will be lending a hand in the kitchen. Her dish is Great Nan Sarah's leek soup with Welsh rabbit stars. This authentic Welsh dish manages to combine the national emblem of Wales, the beloved leek, with the country's favourite and tastiest snack, Welsh rabbit. First thing I do is take one large onion and cut it into quite a small dice. Me and my mum, we always cook together. We know each other's kitchens probably better than we know our own. And what I'll do next is melt some nice Welsh butter and then pop the onions in and fry them until they're soft. The next thing we do is chop the leeks. I put the leeks into the soup. Now, obviously, the leeks are the national emblem of Wales. And my old nan, she was a very proud Welsh lady and she loved to cook with leeks. So we need to peel the potatoes and then chop them. It's really nice to have a recipe like this passed down through the generations. Then we need to put the chicken stock into the pan. This should now take about 15 minutes to cook. Next, we're doing the buttered leeks. My nan always used to do buttered leeks and she'd put them in the bottom of the dish because it gives it a really nice buttery, leaky finish. Just add these leeks. It definitely has been passed through quite a few generations. It seems to be a firm favourite with our family and always has been. Now we've put the leeks aside, it's time to do the Welsh rarebit, and this is where my sous chef gets involved. Certainly, Jen. You can grate the cheese for yes, me, please. I know. You should always use Welsh cheese. In the south, it's always kaya filly. In the north, it's usually... Well, we always use a Snowdonia, which is a mature cheddar. It's the sort of thing you like to pass on to your children. And grandchildren. I do have a granddaughter and she will be learning how to do this as well. Jen, could I ask you to measure out the milk for me, please? Yeah, no problem. We can't have Gino criticising the Welsh rarebit part of the recipe. Oh, no, definitely which, not. Uh, I'd be absolutely gutted if he did. It's the beer next. You should always use Welsh bitter. The next bit is the breadcrumbs, Mother. Right, here we are, Jen. We need to boil this for a couple of minutes just so that all of the extra liquid evaporates. So we start adding some of the cheese. And next we need to add some Worcestershire sauce. 
a nice teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Great Grand Sarah would definitely be very, very pleased to see both her leek soup and her wonderful Welsh rarebit recipe on the television. Right, the next job is to spread the rarebit mixture onto the toast. Is just sprinkle a little bit of that cheddar we reserved from earlier. And then we pop it back in the grill. It's always best to watch so you don't burn it at this stage and waste all that hard effort. Now we've got to cut star shapes out of the Welsh rarebit to go on top of the soup. And then it's time to blend the soup. Now all the bits of the dish are ready, it's time to serve it up. Before serving, Jen adds a generous swirl of single cream to finish. So that's Jen's recipe for Great Nan Sarah's leek soup with Welsh rarebit stars, a dish about as Welsh as they come. So, Jen, tell me everything I should know about your recipe. Come on. Well, it's a leek soup with Welsh rarebit, and okay. it was made first by my great-grandma. How old is this recipe it's been in it's your family? Well over 100 years. OK. My great-grandma, she started cooking it about 1900, and then she passed it down to my grandma, Betty, who passed it on to my mum, Jean, and then she's passed it on to me. I really remember having the soup at my grandma Betty's. She was a really warm, lovely person and she always had sort of something in the kitchen. She was always cooking something or baking something for us. She always wanted to make sure that her grandkids had a really nice time when they went to stay with her. She used to make it for us when we'd been out walking in a nice sort of cold, windy day and we'd come in and there'd be a nice hot bowl of soup waiting for us. So you now have the responsibility of keeping this recipe alive? Yeah, definitely. It's a really good tradition to be able to keep alive. It's really nice to know that it came from my great-grandma and that I can keep cooking it just the way she used to. The only thing I've changed is I tend to use a blender to make sure it's a really smooth soup. What would it mean to you to win today's show and all of a sudden everybody can come here in the restaurant and enjoy. It would be amazing to win this and it would be amazing if my mum could sort of see it and she'd be really, really proud of me. It would be really important to me to make my mum proud. So, Jen, your soup is ready. I can see you blitzed everything down. It's all nice and smooth, but it's not very velvety. So I'm going to show you a very simple technique to make you sure that it's beautiful and smooth, your soup, all right? So you have one of this one a conical sieve, okay, another pan, and the only thing that you have to do is we pick up the soup from this side, straight into the sieve, like that, and then what do we do? We pass it through the sieve, slowly, slowly, so then all the little bits, they're gonna stay into the sieve, and the only things we're gonna get on the bottom part is a beautiful velvety soup. So this is your sieve, this is your spoon, that is your soup, Sieve away, sieve away, sieve away. <laughs> Lunch service is fast approaching and the pressure in the kitchen is mounting for our three home cooks. But so far, they're all off to a terrible start. In her excitement, Jen's used up all of her leeks in the soup and has kept none back for garnishes. So it looks like her rarebit stars will be missing a key ingredient. Just had a massive disaster and put all the leeks in the soup when I was supposed to save some for the buttered leeks, but never mind. So we've got to see if we've got some more leeks, otherwise it'll be a total yeah. disaster. Chloe's not faring any better. Whilst constructing the Anglesey eggs, she's taken her eye off the cheese sauce and has even managed to smoke out the kitchen. I just managed to um, put my butter in the pan ready to make my cheese sauce and it was a little bit too hot so I managed to burn all the butter. And Michelle is worried that her plated up dish won't look good enough. I'm a bit anxious really and making sure everything looks right because it's all about presentation and making sure everything's just blob on. That's, that's the biggest fear and everything's hot enough. <laughs> So that's our menu complete for today. Three very tasty recipes with plenty of heritage. And I really hope that my paying customers, they're gonna absolutely love it. So don't go anywhere, because very soon, it's lunch time. I need two soups. Service. Coming up. Veg. There's pandemonium in the kitchen as service starts. Veg, oh, where are the veg? Two veg. And the cooks discover the reality of a professional kitchen. Yes, yes, chef. Yes, chef. I need two soups. Bring it on, bring it on. Yes, Two minutes, chef. So this is like my worst nightmare. 
Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home, where today I'm in the coastal village of Port Marion in Wales. As I'm talking to you, the clock is ticking and my three home cooks are busy preparing the kitchen for today's lunchtime service. Soon the diners will be arriving in this beautiful restaurant. So while I go back and check on the cooks, let's remind ourselves what's on the menu today. Chloe Valchak is making her great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs, an island speciality that benefits from the quality of the local eggs. This dish means a lot. It's very traditional towards the family and it's something that I can always remember with the family. I've got a niece and nephew now and hopefully when they're old enough they'll be able to learn this dish as well. Michelle Thomas is cooking her great-grandmother Odette's Kenyan stew. This recipe has travelled over 4,000 miles to bring the exotic taste of Nairobi to North Wales. When I make this dish, it just brings such fond memories um, of cooking with my grandmother, you know, the smell of it, childhood, the taste of it. It's just amazing. And Jen Todd is making her great-nan Sarah's leek soup with Welsh rabbit stars, a dish that's full of Welsh pride. The leeks are the national emblem of Wales. And my old nan, she was a very proud Welsh lady and she loved to cook with leeks. It's almost lunchtime and as the waiting staff put the finishing touches to the restaurant, a queue of diners has formed outside, all excited to try our home cook's signature dishes. Back in the kitchen, our cooks are rising to the challenge. Getting ready to start layering my dish up now, so it's, this is getting exciting. I like this bit. It's a bit hot. But yeah, fine. Can't wait for it now all to happen and kick off them. <gasps> it's quite strange having to cook for this quite quantity, really. I mean, I'm, whenever I make this at home, it's only normally for about four or five of us. Chloe, how are you doing here? I'm all right, I'm all right. There's a lot of getting eggs there. here. Yes, one egg per person per dish, hopefully. Ah, and this is the uh, clay yep. pot you were talking about. Yep, these are the dishes. How pretty. They're gorgeous, aren't they? That's very so, pretty. And from Anglesey as well, so they go with the dish Tell really well. They're absolutely going to like that. I yeah. love them. Yeah. Now, have you got everything ready for service? I think so. I just need to slightly reheat my mash okay. just, to, just to give it some warmth, and then I'm going to layer it all up. Then these are going to go in the oven, hopefully, if I'm on time, for about three quarters of an okay. hour. And tell me, are you going to be ready for service? All the prep is done? Yep. I'm... Anything that I can do for you? No, I'm good. I think I'm I'm ready to go. Everything is all right? Yeah, brilliant. So we're going to be all right for service? Yes, yes. definitely. <laughs> so, what's happening here? Well, I'm just trying to cook down my kale. OK. I never want to see kale again in my life. Why? Because it's just... This is the thing that you told me that you love, I know, kale. but I've never cooked so much of it in my life. I know, because usually you probably cook for four or five people, exactly. and all of a sudden there are going to be 50, 60 exactly, out there. Exactly, exactly. What's happening in here? This is our um, lamb stew. All right. Look and in Swahili, there. it's called Muchuzi. What is it called? Muchuzi. Muchuzi? Yeah. Oh, it smells unbelievable. I'm just about to do my mash now, so okay. fingers crossed. So the mash, so you got the Muchuzi ready. Yeah. The Sukuma Wiki. The Sukuma Wiki ready. Yeah. The mashed potato. Irio. Irio. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we should get ready? No. No. No, we're all right. So you're going to be all right for service? Well. Right, we don't have, we probably have less than an hour. Right, stress yeah. levels are going up a little bit. Okay. So, what's happening here? Well, I've just finished the Welsh rabbit sauce that needs to be spread on the toast and then topped with cheese and grilled. You've done this by yourself? I know. Without your mummy behind you? I know. How dare I? I saw when you cooked at home, your mother was all over you doing this sauce. <laughs> now, let me see. So, this is completely ready? It is, to I go on, to, the, on the toast, yeah? On the to I need to taste it so then I can report back to the big boss. <laughs> Hey. Wow. <laughs> you are good. I am good. I tell you something, this is really nice. I will report <laughs> back. I will report <laughs> back. The morning's preparations are now over, and whether our home cooks are ready or not, the restaurant is open for business. Yeah, yeah just from Archie Plummer. The customers in Port Marion are a discerning crowd, so our three home cooks will have to work very hard to impress yeah. them. Come on, guys, we have five minutes to go and I need the final dish on the plate, yeah? Five minutes. Are you going to be ready? Yeah, 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 definitely. Five minutes. By the end of lunch service, Gino will award one dish the honour of being on this restaurant's menu for a month. 
His decision will look at three main criteria, cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. So whilst the cooks plate up their dishes, Gino heads front of house to meet two very special guests. So Gina, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you Gina. good? Oh, I'm fantastic. How excited are you that this dish that has been in your family for so long, now all of a sudden, on a restaurant menu, it could be that it's on a restaurant menu for one month. That would be fantastic. <laughs> well, My nan would be so proud of Jen. She really would. We will soon find out. Sarah, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Mwah. Well, everything okay? Yes, fine, thank you. A bit nervous. Why for my are you daughter. nervous? Well, nervous for my daughter. Well, do, do you think she's going to do well during service? I think so. It's a good dish. Yeah. Very soon we're going to start. Okay. Okay, and uh, enjoy yourself. I'll see I'm you sure later. We will. It's Gino's role to ensure that every dish that leaves the kitchen tastes delicious and is also beautifully presented. So Gino must try each one. First up is Chloe and her great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs with a fresh green salad. So Chloe's Anglesey eggs. Beautiful. In a little pot, nice and crispy on the top, and I think I'm going to like this one. Nice mash. Mmm. The mash is beautiful. This is a lot of flavors in here. The egg. By the way, it looks to me that it's cooked to perfection. An orange in the middle. Oh. Boiled egg with the cheese sauce, the sauté leeks. You know, such a simple dish that you put it together, it's perfect. Next is Michelle and her great-grandma Odette's Kenyan stew with mashed potato and kale. So here we have it, Michelle's Kenyan stew, which I have to say smells unbelievable. We got the mash there with sweet corn, rakini beans. See, coriander comes through beautifully. The kini beans are nice and al dente. You get the crunchiness of the sweet corn. And the meat, I just hope that it's going to completely break into my mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just beautiful. Oh, so I have no problem whatsoever with the flavors. I do have big problems with the, the way it's presented. Michelle, let me show you the way I think we should serve this dish. Right. Okay. First of all, the mashed potato, okay? You have all this beautiful color, the red, the green, the peas. What I want you to do, I want you to roll the mashed potato exactly the same way I'm doing it. Okay. okay? Put it there. Yeah. So it's beautiful to roll on one side. Okay? Yeah. Then what are we, what are we gonna do? The stew, yeah. we're gonna put it next to it. So the stew is gonna go next to it, not on top, because what I wanted to achieve is to get the beautiful color of the stew, the redness and the richness of the stew to complement next to yeah. the mashed potato like that. For the kale, just get yourself one of these little dishes okay. and serve it separately. This is now ready to be served in a professional kitchen. Fab. What do you think? It looks fab. If you can do all your dishes like that, I will just. You are on a winner, miss. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Gino. Another pleased woman. Yes. And finally, Gino will taste Jen's great nan Sarah's leek soup with Welsh rabbit stars. The soup, nice and velvety. Nice. And I like the little touch of putting the crunchy leek on top. I think that is quite cool. Mmm. Yummy. Now, this is what it's all about. Look at that. Beautiful cheeses, Welsh rabbit. I've been looking forward to this all day. Oh, amazing. Absolutely good. The only thing is, on the top, it's nice and crispy. The bottom part is a little bit too soft for me. So, Jen, you right? Beautiful soup. Excellent. 
very nice. Now, I like the way you present it. I have no problem with that. It's send a single cream. I think we should use double. Yeah. Double cream is got the um, the fact that it's not going to split. Can you yeah. see that it's been yeah. split in a single cream? So I think what we should do is to make sure that the bread is beautiful and toasted. So put it in the oven yeah. and let it dry on a wire rack so they get really, really toasted. Yeah. Overall, I think it is amazing. Oh. It's good. Oh. With the three dishes making the grade in the restaurants, the hungry diners can start to order. Now, it's very important, whenever I shout the order of your dish, you need to answer me back. You need to tell me, yes, Gino, yes, chef, OK? Because I need to know exactly where you are. So talk to me, let me know, one minute to go, 30 seconds to go, because then I can coordinate all of you, okay. all right? So, big push, keep smiling. <laughs> Remember, this is just food. You've done it plenty of times. The only difference now, we're going to have to do it for a lot of people and a lot of strangers. Are we understood each other? Yes, yes chef. OK, everybody back to position, yeah, yeah where you yeah. belong. And then we're going to start service in 30 seconds. Are we all ready to order? Can I will eat soup, please? Soup, of course. Yeah. Uh, can my Kenyan stool, please? Yeah. Yeah. I might go for the, for the eggs and the salad, something different. OK, girls, the first sources are coming through. Listen yeah. to me. No I need five soups in total. I need one egg and five stew. Yes, yeah, chef. All right, can I have three soup? One stew. Yes, Hello? Yes, chef. Can I have two more stew? Yes, chef. Okay, you got two stew. Yes, chef. I need two soups and I need my two eggs. How long for the soup? About 20 seconds, chef. Okay. Can you listen to me? Yes, chef. Three eggs, chef. Very nice. Jen, very nice. Three soup, two stews, and I need one egg. Hello? Now, guys, we're going to table number one as soon as we get the vegetable. Veg, oh, where are the veg? Two veg. Now that Gino finally has the three dishes and is happy with their presentation, he allows them to be served to the diners. <laughs> thank you. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Look at your vegetarian dish. It looks delicious. Enjoy. Five soup, one soup, one egg. Michelle is finding it hard to keep up with Gino's constant demands. Yeah. Bit under pressure. Bring them here. Because I've got another five to do. How long for the soup? It's on its way, my darling. This is like my worst nightmare. Can I have the soup, please? Service. Very nice, very nice. I need one egg now. Yeah, coming. Trying to keep count. Can I just grab my egg? Chloe, I need one egg. It's on its way, chef. Jen is in the epicentre of the kitchen's heat and is melting as quickly as cheese on a rabbit. Probably hotter than the surface of the sun right at this moment in time, especially standing in front of the grill, which is lovely and warm. Jen? Yes, Chef? I'm going to stand away from that. <laughs> Come on, four soups. Yes, four Chef. Stew. Yes, Chef. Hello? Yes, yes Chef. chef. It's lovely, yes. And how is yours, um, Karis? I've had the Kenyan stew and it's absolutely delicious. The meat is very tender and it's full of flavour. And it's really, really nice. I've ordered the um, Anglesey eggs and um, I've never actually had it before, although it's a very local dish and it's absolutely lovely, it's so tasty. I have the leek soup and the Welsh rabbit and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, the, uh, the Welsh rabbit accompanies the leek soup beautifully. One more oh. stew! Yes, Chef! And one more egg! How many eggs, Chef? Five eggs! Have more stew, Chef? And in my two soups. Jen, are you still awake? Yes, Chef! Yes, Chef! Is everybody all right out there? Everybody happy? Everybody happy? Any complaint? With the diners happily tucking into the three heritage dishes, our home cooks are impressing the people of Port Marion. So join me after the break when I'm going to have to make the decision of which of these beautiful dishes they're going to be on this restaurant menu for one month. Wish me luck. Uh, can I have one more soup, one more stew? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Coming up. The winner of today's That's Not Taste Like Home is... One stew. 
you one soup. Yes, chef. And I need my two eggs. Chef Gino De Campo is on a mission to prove there's no taste like home. Five stew. OK, a bit under pressure. He's found three home cooks with three historic family recipes. Together, they've taken over a restaurant in Port Marion, North Wales. It's a full house, and as a result, the orders are coming through thick and fast. Four soups, bring them on. I want four. And our three home cooks have risen to the challenge. Service is nearly over, and the cooks are all keen for Gino to pick their dish to feature on this restaurant's menu for a month. Wonderful, wonderful. OK, guys, the last table, one soup. Yes, chef. One stew. Yes, chef. How long for the soup? Ten seconds, chef. One egg here and down here. Oh. That's the way I, 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 I like <laughs> it. <laughs> we done it. Well done. Come here, come here, come here, come here. So, how do you feel? Fabulous. Ah, yeah? Brilliant. Hot? Yes. Very hot. Yeah. It's very hot, is it? Yeah. Would you do it again? <laughs> Look at no? Face. No, I would really. Come yeah. back tonight yeah. and do it all over yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. Would you do it again? Yeah, of course. Now we have one little thing that we have to do. Mm -hmm. There is a kitchen that needs to be cleaned up. OK? So uh, get on with it, please. Thanks. And uh, uh, I'll see you later. I'm the one with the cocktails in the garden. <laughs> Service is now over, and our cooks have done all they can to secure their dish a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. It's now up to the diners, the restaurant's head chef and the manager to help Gino make his difficult decision. I had the Angus eggs, it was delicious. The cheese sauce was very creamy, very tasty, really nice. I had the Kenyan stew, um, it was really, really nice. I thought the mash was really nice because I didn't know it was going to come out like that. I thought it was just going to be plain mash, so it was really, really good. And uh, yeah, it's really tasty. I had the leek soup today and I thought it was really nice because it's uh, the first time I've ever had leek soup. So I mean, it's the first of many because I really enjoyed it. Any chance of second help, please? <laughs> Thumbs up for you. Thumbs up all round from the diners, but which dish will Gino pick? Will it be Chloe Valchak and her great-grandma Jane's Anglesey eggs, an island dish that has been delighting this family for over four generations? What would it mean to you to have this dish that has been in your family for over 100 years now to all of a sudden be on a restaurant menu and everybody can enjoy it? sense of pride, because it's my family. And I just think that great-grandma Jane would be really proud of me today. Or will it be Michelle Thomas's great-grandma Odette's Kenyan stew, a dish that combines the exotic flavours of Africa to remind her of a happy childhood in Nairobi? I had a fantastic heritage. I had fantastic family backgrounds, and it would mean so much. It really was. Or will it be Jen Todd with her great nan Sarah's leek soup with Welsh rabbit stars? A thoroughly Welsh dish that makes delicious use of her country's national emblem. It would be amazing to win this, and it would be amazing if my mum could sort of see it and she'd be really, really proud of me. It would be really important to me to make my mum proud. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my three home cooks. Come on. All for you. All for you. Now, how did you feel in a professional kitchen? Oh, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Hot. Yeah. Is it hot? <laughs> did you find it hard? Yeah, yeah, very, I very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, it's been absolutely a pleasure. Yeah. You know, you managed to put your dish on a restaurant menu, and everybody loved it. Only one of your dishes can be on this restaurant menu for one month. The winner of today's Does Not Taste Like Home is. Michelle Kenyon Stewart. Oh. Come here. Okay. Well done, oh. well done. This is for you. Thank you. You deserve it. You worked very hard. Thank you. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a fantastic dish. You deserve it to be the winner. 
So what you should do now is to get your mom over here yeah. to come to the restaurant and surprise her. Yeah. To say, Mommy, look what I've done. <laughs> Happy love day. Yeah? Amazing. Yeah. But the girls are all winners. They've, of course. They've done so well, and I'm so glad it was with these two as well, because <laughs> they were just fab girls. I'm really, really pleased for Michelle. She worked so hard, she had so much to do, and she just really pulled it out of the bag. And then we all had a taste of it in the kitchen, and we thought it was fantastic. I think Great Grandma Jane would be really, really proud of me today. I think she'd be really chuffed. I think she'd, uh, she'd be uh, just dancing for joy, I think. If my great-grandmother was here, she'd want to crack open a drink and celebrate, and she'd be chuffed to bits, absolutely chuffed to bits. So, yeah, over the moon. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Well done. What an amazing day that we had, and, of course, congratulations to Michelle and her Kenyan stew. Now, of course, don't forget to join me next time as I continue my journey across the UK to find more home cooks, all eager to prove that that's not taste like home.